Welcome to Matthews Arena. For your safety, please take a moment to locate the exits closest to you. If an evacuation is required, please proceed calmly to the closest available exit and follow the direction of university officials and emergency personnel. If you see something, say something. Thank you, and please enjoy the event. Welcome guests. We will now begin the Northeastern University College of Professional Studies doctoral hooding and graduation ceremony. The procession of graduates and their faculty advisors will now begin. <laughs>
doctoral candidates and your guests please rise as you are able for the procession of the platform party led by Dr. David Madigan, Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, and Dr. Radhika Seishan, Dean of the College of Professional Studies. invite you to be seated. Congratulations, class of 2023. Let's celebrate you've earned it. We're so proud to watch you walk across the stage today. Take pride in your many accomplishments. Earning your degree is such an incredible life milestone. Welcome to the club. Welcome to the field. I wish you the best as you continue to be change agents in whatever industry that you fall into. It has been an absolute privilege and honor working with you. I wish you nothing but the best moving forward. Enjoy this day. This is your moment. Make a great impact and know that Northeastern is always here behind you. I am thrilled that I was part of your educational experience at Northeastern. Wishing you success as you continue on in your journey as transformative change agents. To the class of 2023. Congratulations. 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 Congratulations, class of 2023. Congratulations on your graduation and hats off to you for achieving this milestone. Congratulations. Congratulations, class of 2023. You've made it. Now go out and win the world. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Dean of the College of Professional Studies, Radhika Seishan. time to break things up and have a nice loud good morning what do you think good morning, good morning. great um, so graduates alumni faculty and staff friends and families and distinguished guests including Provost Madigan welcome to Northeastern University College of Professional Studies doctoral hooding and graduation ceremony it is an honor to stand before you today to celebrate the remarkable achievements of our doctoral graduates. Today, we recognize the culmination of years of hard work, dedication, and perseverance that have brought you to this point. The doctoral degree is the highest awarded at our college and carries all the accompanying honors and distinctions. 
Now, as you receive your doctoral hoods today, you join a community of scholars who have devoted their lives to the pursuit of knowledge and the advancement of their fields. Your research, your teaching, and your contributions to your disciplines have already had significant impact, and we know you will continue to make important contributions in the years ahead. So on behalf of Northeastern, I wish to congratulate each of you. I would also like to thank you. Thank you for your diligence, your persistence, and the contributions you have already made through your learning and scholarship to each other and to our community. You brought the best of yourselves to this endeavor, and in so doing, you belong to a thriving global network of accomplished Huskies living in more than 190 countries. Now, you will carry your new skills and knowledge and the Northeastern name into the world. You carry the pride and the good wishes of our faculty and staff who have supported you in every step of the way. Please rise as you are able and join me in showing appreciation to anyone here or online who has shaped your experience and supported you with wisdom, empathy, and unparalleled expertise. Shall we? When you chose Northeastern's College of Professional Studies, you did so because you wanted to learn from experts and belong to a professional learning community with similar goals. You have gained insight from all these experiences that will shape your thinking now and into the future. You have pursued, persisted, and completed because you genuinely want to make a difference in our world. You are part of the 2% of people worldwide who earned a doctorate degree. And you have done so more than once under unique circumstances, juggling work and family, traveling across continents and cities, late nights and early mornings. Through it all, you have shown up every day, understanding that this journey is more than a degree. Your achievement is a transformational milestone, which unlocks new possibilities for you, your family, and your community. Graduates. Your expertise, passion, and determination to make a difference is needed now more than ever. With this degree, you can have an impact, even greater impact at scale. You have the power to be role models through thought leadership, service, policy making, and actions that elevate our educational, private, and civic institutions at large. We are excited to see the impact that you will make in the years to come. And it is an honor to celebrate with you all on this momentous day, class of 2023, from all of us at Northeastern. Congratulations. <laughs> now I'm pleased to introduce our graduation faculty speaker, who is a distinguished member of Northeastern's academic community. Let me say a little, little about her. Dr. Sarah Yule is the Associate Dean of Faculty Affairs for the College of Professional Studies. She previously served as the Assistant Dean of Faculty and Student Affairs, the Director of the Doctor of Education and Program and Teaching Professor at the Graduate School of Education. During her tenure in the Graduate School of Education, she chaired nearly 100 dissertations and led an innovative redesign of our EDD using experiential learning to drive equity-focused change work. In 2022, it was selected as Program of the Year by the Carnegie Project on the Education Doctorate, an international award recognizing excellence in doctoral programs committed to supporting students in social justice change. Dr. Ewell, Dr. 
Dr. Ewell was also elected to the board of the Carnegie Project of the Education Doctorate. Dr. Ewell's research interests include social justice, education leadership, urban education, teacher preparation and retention, and professional doctorates. She disseminates her research at conferences, including the American Educational Research Association, and she serves as a reviewer for professional journals and conferences and volunteers, because why not? Um, for various community-based organizations and the Traumatic Brain Injury Association. Please join me, join me in a warm welcome, Dr. Sarah Yule. Good morning, everyone. So, so wonderful to see so many familiar faces. I have many graduates that I cannot wait to see come across the stage today. Uh, I first want to thank Provost Madigan and Dean Station for the invitation to speak today. I'm honored to bring you welcoming remarks to each of you from the faculties of the Doctor of Education, the Doctor of Physical Therapy, and the Doctor of Law and Policy programs. We are here this afternoon as a faculty to offer you our most heartfelt congratulations as you achieve this milestone. I would like to ask all of our students as you were able to stand and offer our faculty a round of applause. Thank you. I am privileged to stand before such an accomplished group of scholar practitioners who are constantly working toward a more just and equitable world. Completing a doctoral degree is an incredible accomplishment, and you should all feel proud of your perseverance and dedication to achieving your goals. This is not the end of your journey, it is the beginning. The doctoral degree credential brings with it academic and professional respect, but it also brings power and responsibility. At my own doctoral graduation, I had the privilege of having Archbishop Desmond Tutu as the graduation speaker. Sorry, you got stuck with me. <laughs> he challenged us to do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that overwhelm the world. And I ask of you here today as our newest doctorates, how are you going to use the power that comes to, with your doctoral credentials to do your little bit of good? I could speak about each one of our graduates and the work that you have started and continued here at Northeastern to create, an, create equity focused change in your personal and professional worlds. Let me offer a few examples. One of our, your fellow graduates explored the experience of, and needs of high school students re-entering their high school after a psychiatric hospitalization. She is changing the way her school and community support students and ensure success after a traumatic event. This work has the power to not only transform this graduate school, but serve as a model across the globe that leads to a ripple effect of change for adolescents. And I'm making contact, eye contact with you because you know who you are. <laughs> One of my students that I'm so proud is here today with us. Another graduate who explored injury prevention for adolescent athletes created strategies to reduce injury and increase positive outcomes for young people to stay active. Another graduate explored the impact of the Family First Prevention Services Act in multiple states to inform national reform work. The amazing work you are doing across school districts, healthcare centers, and government agencies, to name a few, creates waves of change in supporting a more prosperous and equitable world. As the newest doctors of Northeastern University, the world needs you more than ever. You must continue to press forward, ask difficult questions, Ask whose voice is not at the table and invite them in. Innovate, reflect, consider new solutions, create a world where opportunities abound for all as we collectively work toward justice and equity. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you, Dr. Ewell. I now invite Provost Madigan and Dean Seishan to return to the podium. Okay, it's time. Now the degrees in course will be conferred. I ask the doctoral candidates and graduates of the Doctor of Physical Therapy, 
Doctor of Education and Doctor of Law and Policy to please rise. Provost Madigan, it is my privilege to report to you that the candidates here assembled and others have qualified in all respects for the degrees in course. They have successfully completed curricula offered by the College of Professional Studies at Northeastern University and have been recommended by the faculty in the Council of Deans to be awarded appropriate degrees in recognition of their academic accomplishments. After the candidates have been presented, members of the graduating class will please remain standing until their degrees have been conferred. Provost Madigan, I have the privilege of presenting those candidates who have qualified in all respects for the degrees of Doctor of Physical Therapy, Doctor of Education, or Doctor of Law and Policy. Thank you, Dean Session. By virtue of the authority of the Board of Trustees of the University, I confer on you and those who have properly qualified the degree of Doctor of Physical Therapy, Doctor of Education, or Doctor of Law and Policy, according to the curriculum in which you have qualified with all the honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereto, thereunto pertaining. Congratulations, graduates. Will the graduates now be, please be seated? Thank you, Provost Madigan and Dean Session. The faculty marshals will now present the graduates for hooding. We invite Dr. Megan Kennedy to the stage for the hooding of the candidates of the Doctor of Law and Policy. Charity Marie Carmody evidence-based criteria's effect on the implementation of the Family First Prevention Services Act in Nebraska and Colorado. Ron K. Equency, data as philanthropy. How can telecommunications companies really share their data for social good and humanitarian crisis response. <laughs> Catherine S. White, Equal Justice Under Law, The Experience of Justice for Pro Se Defendant Tenants in Eviction Proceedings. We invite Dr. Kevin Brennan to the stage to hood their candidate. Did I sound like the voice? Bonnie Verlaine Smith, an analysis of deferred action policy, benefit or detriment through perceptions of recipients.
we invite Dr. Jack Dennerline to the stage for the hooding of the candidates of the Doctor of Physical Therapy. Simran Preet Bumra, PCOS, potential role of hypoandrogenism in muscle mass and strength. Kathleen Mary Doella, a neuroplastic approach to chronic gait deviation, case series. <laughs> Gili Dotan Shori, early intervention providers' perspectives on physical therapy needs for infants at risk for autism spectrum disorder. <clears throat> Maral Hassan Shahi, ulnar nerve repair physical therapy in a musician, a case report. Mary Lisa Lampy, peripheral nerve injury and recovery with physical therapy after total knee arthroscopy, a case report. <laughs> Danielle Ann Marie McFarlane, use of innovative foot strengthening exercises to treat flexible hallux malleus deformity, a case report. Amy Logan Maloney, Effective Physical Therapy Tele-Rehabilitation for Older Adults, a Review of Evidence. Kimberly Miranda, Dance for a Better Stance, a Literature Review. Stacy Beth Simco, Physical Therapy for Students with Autism, Survey of School-Based Physical Therapists. <clears throat> we now invite Dr. Shannon Alpert to the stage to begin the hooding of the candidates of the Doctor of Education. Andrew Francis Atzert, an interpretive phenomenological analysis of cultural intelligence on global virtual teams. <clears throat> Helene Meyer Levenbrook, how assessing district response to COVID-19 can lead to positive change. Catherine Elizabeth Luby, strategies for teachers that reduce anxiety and promote productive struggle for students in secondary mathematics classes. We invite Dr. Andrew Anderson to the stage to hood their candidates.
Jordan Michael Barback, The Impact of Student-Teacher Relationships on Student Learning and Performance. Wandra M. Perry Hartsfield, Investigating Factors That Challenge Academic Progress of African-American High School Student-Athletes. Emily Michelle Belarzik, Aligning Grades and Learning in High School English, a Case Study. <clears throat> Marilia Angelica Correa, The Development of a Grades 5 through 12 World Languages Program. Providing creative opportunities for all learners to develop multilingualism through interdisciplinary projects on learning. <clears throat> Brian Marcos Gaines, Engaging Students in Elementary Science. Titi Ghosh, It's Lonely at the Top, identifying high-yielding strategies used by K-12 administrators to create authentic connections with stakeholders. <clears throat> Nancy A. Hagstrom, Leveraging Collective Inquiry and Collegial Relationships to Catalyze Innovation. Elizabeth Angel Kennedy, a qualitative study on the impact of teacher facilitated advising on sense of belonging and student achievement for minority females in high school. <clears throat> Jennifer N. Kirk, secondary school MTSS framework implemented with fidelity, a case study. Chintan H. Patel, exploring how professional ideologies are impacted by new knowledge. <clears throat> Nicole Ann Prince, exploring the classroom tools used to develop students' higher-order thinking skills in middle and high school STEM courses. <clears throat> Jeffrey Robert Quebec, The Values and Benefits of Independent Boarding Schools. Sherry Stavely Singer, How Students Define Their Roles and Responsibilities as Members of a Community Through Critical Service Learning Pedagogy. <clears throat> Christopher John Themistis, Building a Strong Foundation, Collaborating to Find Effective Teaching Strategies to Teach Writing in English and Social Studies. Leslie R. Wise, Genius Move, Recognizing Gifted Potential Through a Project-Based Learning Student Showcase. What? 
Jarvis Martius Weich. The effects of intersectionality on adolescent black males accessing educational opportunities. We invite Dr. Sharice Childers McKee to the stage to hood their candidates. Michelle Ann Campbell, Shattered Glass, the stories of women presidents who were firsts. Cheryl O'Brien, collaboration between faculty and student affairs and a faculty and residence program. Faith Corinne Lichok Morelato, persisting beyond acculturated barriers toward a baccalaureate degree. International non-native English speaking student retention from year one to year two during a pandemic. Marjoline G. Sosa, Community College, the learning experience for criminal justice students since COVID-19. <laughs> Roberta Giannini, the impact of COVID-19 pandemic and beyond on teaching learning practices of boutique business schools in Barcelona, Spain. Carlene Justine Hempel, seeking an alternative for high-stressed high school students. Can there be multiple paths to success? <laughs> Lori Marie McCadden, second degree nursing student engagement and the notion of consumerism. Lexis McCoy, examining and extending the legacy of Fred Rogers' influence on contemporary teacher-student relationships. <laughs> Beatrice J. Moy, the impact of bullying on the training and careers of medical doctors and medical scientists. Eric Mirosep, co-curricular student leadership and its impact on career readiness. Lisa Ann Rubin Johnson, benefits and challenges of cross-racial mentoring as experienced by first-generation BIPOC PWI student mentees and their white mentors in a non-profit college success program. <laughs> Stefania Maria Agliano, enhancing facilitator efficacy implementing anti-trafficking and gender-based violence prevention education with adolescent males. Sharmeen Ahmed, Brown Girl Magic, an action research study using WhatsApp to overcome barriers of awareness and access to out-of-the-classroom experiences for Bangladeshi and Pakistani female immigrant and first-generation BPFIF college students. <laughs> Jennifer G. Kanoyer, 
workplace aggression among women colleagues, an action research study at a small rural community college. Reginald Vincent Douay, you belong here. Teachers' perspectives on incorporating a culturally responsive approach to increase engagement for students of color in AP courses. Lenin Gibson, mitigating learning disruption, school leadership sense making and preparation for blended and remote learning during COVID-19 school closures. Krista Grant, identifying an effective strategy to enhance black students' experiences and sense of belonging at a predominantly white institution through action research. Trang Min Le Chan, an exploration into the best practices that support the underrepresentation of Asian American female leaders in higher education, an action research study. Marianne Mitri. International students and the need for more support and resources. <laughs> Susanna A. Peron, exploring bilingual teachers' attitudes and beliefs regarding their approach to teaching newcomer middle school students. Viola Marie Schmid Doyle, cultivating professional dialogue to develop collaborative culture in elementary literacy instruction. <clears throat> Kyla Amanda Stripling, cultivation of professional leadership behaviors in women. Kelly A. Williamson, partnering with caregivers to improve home and school connection. We invite Dr. Kelly Kahn to the stage to hood their candidates. Amanda Joyce DeRocher, developing awareness of ableism in intellectual and developmental disabilities. <clears throat> Alexis Abrantz Korea Forget, experiences of parents of deaf and hard of hearing children with supporting the literacy education of their children. <clears throat> Janet Pearson Koza, we left out a person. Teachers' experiences of the implementation of restorative practices and interpretive phenomenological analysis. Sheila M. Stepp, 
and interpretive phenomenological analysis. How do community college faculty experience learning, selecting, and refining their teaching methods? Cheers, buddy. Brendan Kent, School Leaders' Perspectives of Implementing and Supporting Social Emotional Learnings. We invite Dr. Wendy Crocker to the stage to hood their candidates. Jeremy Lane Burgoyne, sitting in discomfort, supporting the experiences of non-clinical student affairs staff managing student well-being concerns. <clears throat> Peyton Farrell Busby Little, educators as partners, showing not telling parents how to support early literacy at home. Jocelyn Malloy Capallo, early childhood retention efforts through psychological hardiness and educator resiliency. Robin Ann Cass, undergraduate STEM student communication skills exploring ways to improve the alignment between academic outcomes and employer needs. Amanda Collette Castle, implementing and strengthening inclusive practice for students with differing abilities. Bethany Chandler, voicing trauma. Educators' perspectives on secondary trauma in the workplace and their methods of coping. <clears throat> Heather Finney Curran, how to build a financial sustainability self-assessment at a small teaching college, an action research project. Rachel Suzanne Hall Delavo, the effects of predominantly white school culture and black mentorship on black academic identity development. Jennifer D. Glickman, A Family Affair, an action research study exploring college resources for first-generation students and their family members. <clears throat> Eric Thomas Hoffman, Everyone is a Case Study, The Learning Foundation of Academic Careers in a Community College. Melissa Ann Jacobs, Building Adolescent Peer Mentorship Relationships in Support of Sustainable Global Civic Engagement.
Lisa Ann Levencher, for teachers by teachers, co-creating a literacy framework with educators to serve students with poverty-induced trauma. Julia Rose Miller, The Scales Lifted From My Eyes, How an Equity Lens Can Inspire Teachers to Differentiate for Their Gifted Students. <laughs> Brianna Marie Murtaugh, Strategies for a School-Based Response to Student Preparation to Post-Secondary Learning. Cynthia Muir Robinson Sandler, Keeping It Real, Integrating Critical Media Literacy Education in a U.S. Public School. <laughs> Stephanie Sear Hager, Supporting Teachers' Understanding and Implementation of Universal Design for Learning, UDL for student engagement through transformational leadership, one school's journey. Mark Andrew Torallo, exploring proven strategies that enable remote workers to take active breaks during their workday. Yanelli Torres Townsend, I was not confident enough to ask for help, serving first-generation minority undergraduate students at a private university. <laughs> Mary Ann McAllister Wiseman, they deserve to engage and see, promising practices for faculty providing online courses at a Hispanic-serving institution. <laughs> Melissa Ann Zablonski, it's not really something we talk about. Building mainstream teacher capacity to effectively and equitably serve English language learners. We invite Dr. Michael Dean to the stage to hood their candidates. Zina Chan, teaching strategies to support creativity training in Hong Kong design schools. Charlotte Barker Forrest, representation matters. Black faculty seeing themselves through the looking glass of recruitment. Eva Gonova, changing the configuration of learning experiences for paraprofessionals in social emotional learning. <laughs> Jerron Stephen Green, engaging African American fathers in the education of their children.
Jonathan Scott Kroll, the role of experiential learning and reflection in the classroom. William E. Malia, the effects of a science research program and experiential learning opportunity on high school student engagement in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM. <laughs> Kim Kamla Mahes, bridging the gap between education and employability in electrical engineering. Sarah Polangin, Inclusion in Practice. <laughs> Alexander Carlo Patarelli, Increasing College Access and Awareness of Options for low-income students through collaborative college admission practices. <laughs> Branda Lynn Peebles, assessing the role of emotional intelligence, EI, in small organizational leadership. Denise Cherie Roll, a descriptive analysis of the relationship between student career support services efficacy and on-time graduation in online education. <clears throat> Zoe Stern Silberberg, successful student support interventions and strategies needed for successful student service support systems. <laughs> Samil Delphine Taylor, Young, Black, and Miss Educated, a narrative inquiry study of Black student leadership at predominantly white institutions. We invite Dr. Sarah Ewell to the stage to hood their candidates. Vivian Bruno Garcia, student reintegration in school after separation for psychiatric hospitalization. A case study of the successful implementation of a re-entry process for optimal student adjustment. Amanda Kate Creamer Carroll, exploring the influence of managers' gender-linked behaviors in the perceived support of transfer of learning. <laughs> Timothy Patrick Donahue, the impact of life experiences on the school disciplinary practices of suburban high school administrators. Rachel Virginia Draper, how transfer admission professional staff make sense of their role, an interpretive phenomenological analysis. <laughs> Matthew James LaCava, supporting students with emotional impairments in the public schools, a case study exploring key components to program development and sustainability. Carrie Lynn Purchase, 
principles leading for social justice in predominantly white suburban schools. Eric Stephen Kalk Brenner. How do an organization and its employment services team support people with autism in the workplace? Ralph David Fasano. Documentary style educational video for online learners. Student perceptions of an innovative approach to learning. Justin William Silvestri, what's my intention? How male undergraduate students make sense of study abroad. We invite Dr. Joan Giblin to the stage to hood their candidates. Caroline M. Callahan, strengthening staff and administrators' sense of workplace belonging. Joseph David Bostick, the influence, impact, and motivation of intensive STEAM programming for urban community graduates who desire to attend college. <laughs> Eileen Francis Corigliano. Create a professional learning community for faculty to best support students in heterogeneous classrooms. <laughs> Peter Waja. Perspectives of teachers and key educational stakeholders on basic educational policy formulation process in Ghana. A qualitative evidence from one district. Jody Del Sol, increasing the persistence of underrepresented community college students pursuing STEM. Results of student development workshops. Nicole El Masri, academic dishonesty, exploring the relationship between culture and curriculum. Natasha A. Graff, supporting the transfer pipeline, increasing first-generation community college transfer students' persistence at four-year institutions. Carla A. Mandel, the future of business education, Connecting Value and Relevancy, an Action Research Study. <laughs> Miriam Milford Sullivan, Making Sense of Human Capital Theory, an interpretive phenomenological analysis that explores how black women perceive their human capital 
after participating in a STEM registered apprenticeship program. <laughs> Carrie Scheide Miller, an action research study on improving job satisfaction and belonging through flexible work. Bianca Giselle Palacios, exploring the internationalization efforts at a South Florida university. Christopher Joseph Scanlon, an interpretive phenomenological analysis of first-generation college students' involvement experiences during the COVID-19 pandemic. <laughs> Harriet Jane Sullivan, drug education. Catania Webb Walker, I Need People, Mentoring is a Strategy to Support Black Doctoral Student Success. We invite Dr. Joseph McNabb to the stage to hood their candidates. Mary Rose Baron Steele. If the student is not neurotypical, it's up to the teacher to figure it out. Investigating the perceptions of students with attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, and executive function deficits with their academic program. <laughs> Marissa Brush. Understanding Declining International Graduate Student Yield at Private University. <laughs> Abigail Whitney Cavazos, HEOP Study Abroad, Barriers and Opportunities. Leif Jacobson, When Adversity Strikes, Exploring the Pandemic Recovery of a Boston Charter School. <laughs> Paula Ann King, Career Preparation Practices for Neurodiverse Students in Higher Education. Monica Ann Parker James, leading change in the transition to flex work beyond the COVID-19 pandemic. <laughs> Megan Emily Purdue, building MOOC design on learners, an action research study Peter Anthony to story. Why do they stay? A study exploring persistence and attainment of historically underrepresented students at a regional women's university in New England. Matthew Jason Heiser, understanding the capacities of mid-level supervisors in addressing burnout resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic. 
and interpretive phenomenological analysis. <laughs> Katrina Marie Harold, Best Practices for Institution-Wide Implementation of Universal Design for Learning in Higher Education. Ralph L. Hogan III, Changing the Approach, Promoting Student Affairs Competencies in EOP Professional Development. Charette Charles Stokes III, How to Increase <laughs> Alumni Giving in the HBCU Environment. Jacqueline Rummel Thompson, cultivating the college recruitment domain through a community of practice. <laughs> Karina Lee Zolkowski, competing logistics in academic program development. We invite Dr. Morina Morris to the stage to hood their candidates. <laughs> Philip Eccles, lived experiences of black teachers with white principals in North Carolina Title I elementary schools. Kamari A. Collins, The Persistence and Retention of Black Male Community College Students. Tracy D. Jones, Site Assista, How Black Women at Ivy League Graduate Schools of Education Make Meaning of Thriving. Kin test, considering the value of post-secondary culinary education. <laughs> Dorothy M. Wax, a woman's place is in the lead. A narrative research study exploring nonprofit women's leaders' experiences in getting to the corner office. Yeah. 
we invite Dr. Melissa Parenti to the stage to hood their candidates. Erin Vigiano Conley, Employing the Future, Exploring Teacher Externship Impact on Classroom Practice. <laughs> Melissa Ann Kukuru, Accessibility of the Curriculum in a Diverse District. Rebecca Derwent Hamilton, who teaches the teacher, increasing the literacy professional knowledge of teachers through formation of a professional learning community. <clears throat> Deshel M. Reed, BIPOC employees need effective coaching practices in the workplace. Cynthia Elizabeth Ritchie, collaborating on and tapping into multilingual parents' caregivers' perceptions, assumptions, and understandings as assets, building strong family school partnerships, and supporting smooth early childhood transitions beginning in preschool. <clears throat> Sabrina K. Sanachar, Perceptions of Engineering Students' Career Readiness Competencies, Participating in a Cooperative Education Program, and Supervisors' Expectations. <clears throat> Joanne Marie Spaniolo, Building Social-Emotional Learning Awareness and Sustainable Supports Through Teacher Collaboration. Micah Jolyn Tomlin, supporting teachers through the collaborative process, an interpretive phenomenological analysis examining teacher perceptions on principal best practices that support their collaboration in professional learning communities. We invite Dr. Lindsay Portnoy to the stage to hood their candidates. Ashley M. Altizer, Forming Catholic Educators, The Challenge of New Teacher Induction and Mentoring in Catholic Schools. <clears throat> Wendy N. Falchuk, Communication and Collaboration Across Student Support Teams and Montessori Classroom Teachers. Natalie Lynn Gaudet, closing the racial representation gap in youth leadership programs. <clears throat> Elizabeth Ann Harrison Toledo, mentor teacher impact on student teacher development. Nancy Aguaro Holche, Leadership Practices in New Jersey State Mandated Preschools. <clears throat> Mary Catherine McNamara. 
Punching Above My Weight, Mentoring Entrepreneurs' Well-Being. Tyrone Newsom, I want to be a mentor, teacher, and just a resource, supporting first-generation students within and beyond higher education. <laughs> Elizabeth Jane Noonan, student and educator perceptions on opportunities towards college readiness and post-secondary enrollment of career and technical education completers. Mary Kathleen Scardillo, New Ideas, New Directions, Experiential Learning for MBA Students. Allison Leah Tercio, co-creating a student-centered marketing plan for a small liberal arts college, an action research study. We invite Dr. Corliss Thompson to the stage to hood their candidates. Eugenia Elias, an interpretive phenomenological analysis, struggles of Arabic speaking adults in the US, language, culture, and fear. <laughs> Carmen Tia Renee Greer, a case study of wraparound facilitators and their community of practice, intentional collaborative communications. We invite Dr. Chris Unger to the stage to hood their candidates. <laughs> Gina Riella Obey, community-based projects cultivating 21st century skills and civic engagement. Terry Lynn Barber, let's talk about diversity, dinner and discourse on shifting diversity, equity and inclusion strategy from design to destiny. <laughs> Charla Larissa Baranis, assisting and supporting course instructors to incorporate asynchronous and synchronous technologies and strategies into course design and delivery to improve student learning outcomes. <laughs> Elena May Brondolo, catalyzing innovation capacity in healthcare systems. Alexis Nicole Clark, Intentional Design. How does curriculum design affect literacy and student engagement in elementary charter schools?
Tammy Tobin Darling. How does being in the know set you up for success? Empowering first year students with tools and resources from psychology. Beth A. DeAngelis. Can a course on social emotional learning impact college students' well being? Kristen Lauren DiGiovanni. Social emotional learning in teacher preparation. Impact on pre-service teachers' emotional resilience, perceived self-efficacy, and entrepreneurial spirit. Sarah Max Dorman, supporting struggling readers, an exploration of best practices in high school classrooms in a large northeastern school district. Caitlin Lorraine Federico, Investigation of Remote Teaching and Learning for Mathematics Courses at the Post-Secondary Level. <laughs> Seth Lewis Harmon, How Innovative High School Programs Grow and Scale, a case study on the implementation of an innovative profession-based learning program. Margaret Meg Clement Hemstraut, Physical Education, Teacher Education, Pete, Students' Perceptions of Physical Education. <clears throat> Lori Ann Yeager, A Qualitative Study, Expanding Pre-Service Teacher Perspectives on the possibilities of schooling through engagement with non-traditional and progressive learning environments. <clears throat> Candace Jocelyn Kukas, expanding access to legal education and representation through distance learning. How Chan Loy, how can a community college faculty member improve retention and persistence in an introductory computer science CS1 course? <clears throat> Thomas John Lucas, supporting student mental and emotional health, self-directed methods and practices. James Armando Marvin, Workplace Digitization, an exploration of the effects, the accelerating nature of disruptions caused by advances in technology are having on frontline managers and their teams in industry. <clears throat> Katie Lynn Page, Trauma in the Public School System. Casey Ann Salnick, Creating Student-Centered Schools, 
discovering best practices in experiential, progressive public school design, and exploring the effectiveness of media and community events in creating grassroots change. Roshni K. Shaw, faculty perceptions of reading consultants and a teacher-led professional learning community for upper elementary reading workshop teachers. Corey Fitzpatrick Stefan, bridges over barriers, using literature to enhance cultural responsiveness. We invite Dr. Dan Volchok to the stage to hood their candidates. Paul H. Doristand, college student experiences with computer assisted instruction in a developmental mathematics course. Elizabeth A. Gray, Behavioral Intervention Teams in Higher Education, a descriptive phenomenological study of academic representatives serving on multidisciplinary behavioral intervention teams. Congratulations to Northeastern's newest doctorates. Dean Session will now announce the 2023 recipients of the Dean's Medal for Outstanding Doctoral Work. This is the highest honor awarded by the College of Professional Studies to a doctoral candidate. So, should we do some awards? This award honors exceptional academic achievement and recognizes the author's innovation and creativity, the scope and importance of the doctoral work to a field of study, and the caliber of the author's writing. I'm pleased to announce that there are three recipients this year of the Dean's Medal. So let's start with the first one. You ready for a big round of applause? All right, okay, so I'm gonna say something late breaking about our first recipient, Dr. Katonia Webb Walker, who's just yesterday been appointed as the president of Kennedy King College in Chicago. I'm just going to say a few more things about her and then we'll, we'll bring her to, to, to do an acknowledgement. So she's honored with the Dean's Medal for outstanding doctoral work for her dissertation. I need people. Mentoring is a strategy to support black doctoral student success. Dr. Webb Walker studied the stark disparity in completion rates 
between black, Latinx, and white students enrolled in a doctoral program at Midwestern State University. She discovered that of the students who withdrew or count were counseled out, 75% were black. The barriers that were impacting these students were various and spanned from insti institutionally based to their own work-life balance. Her thesis research explored the value of mentoring to mitigate these factors. She found that mentoring was not only positive for the mentors and the mentees, but also positively addressed the barriers identified by former students. Her work concludes with recommendations for the design and implementation for long-term mentoring programs. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Katonia Webb Walker on winning the Dean's Medal. Dr. Walker. That was a seriously feel-good moment, right? Yeah. All right, let's do the next one. Dr. Stacy Simcoe is our next medal recipient. So let me tell you a little bit about her, and then we can all congratulate together. She's from our Doctor of Physical Therapy program, and she's honored with the Dean's Medal for Outstanding Doctoral Work for her dissertation, Physical Therapy for Students with Autism, Survey of School-Based Physical Therapists. Dr. Simcoe studied the challenges for school-based physical therapists who treat students with autism spectrum disorder. In her research, she found that many therapists receive little to no professional development or training opportunities from their employer on how to best provide services to students with ASD. As the caseloads of students diagnosed with autism have steadily increased, as we all know, so have the barriers for care that exist for school-based physical therapists. Dr. Simcoe sought to identify the issues around student intervention and the value of training and workplace experience. Her research on the importance of dedicated treatment spaces and improved education for therapists on the physical impact of autism will serve as a launching point for improving practices for better student care. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Stacy Simcoe on winning the Dean's Medal. It's just all spectacular, so get ready for the third one. And the, the, the third recipient, Dr. Katie Spencer-White of our Doctor of Law and Policy program. Lots of fans, it's great, hi. Is being honored with the Dean's Medal for Outstanding Doctoral Work for her dissertation, Equal Justice Under Law, Eviction Reform and the Experience of Justice for Pro Se Defendant Tenants. Dr. White is motivated by the fact that justice, as we understand it, is more than procedure, that equal justice is central to the core of equity and human rights. Also core to equity and human rights is a fair, sustainable, and inclusive housing policy. Our understanding of eviction as a social and legal phenomenon has significantly grown thanks to a growing body of social, economic, and empirical legal research which Dr. White has now contributed. She's a leader on this issue in her home state of Maine, where she describes her colleagues as those who, within quotes, toil every day in the trenches, supporting people who have been evicted and serving the most vulnerable with little public support. Her research into the impact of eviction found that it exceeds an absence of justice. It also produces mental and physical insecurity and powerlessness for those experiencing it. Where many might see these challenges as too deeply rooted or complicated, it is exactly these reasons that Dr. White is doing the research 
powerful research and work that she actually she does. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Katie Spencer White on winning the Dean's Medal. And we will now hear from Dr. White. Provost Madigan, Dean Sashan, distinguished faculty, honored guests, friends, family, and my fellow graduates. As a scholar of justice, I hope you will permit me a, a slight digression. I want to acknowledge that we are gathered here today on the ancient lands of the Ashley Wampanoa and the Wampanoag people. I want to give thanks and gratitude for their millennia of stewardship of these lands. My ancestors were actually some of the first colonizers, uh, came to the Massachusetts Bay Colony in the 1600s. So I want to also acknowledge the historic and ongoing trauma of that colonization and the unearned benefits that I have inherited. But at the same time, I hope you will join with me in my commitment to working in solidarity with our indigenous friends and neighbors for their sovereignty and for their ongoing revitalization. It is an absolute honor and pleasure to be with you here today. In the fall of 2019, eight doctoral students bravely began our cohort journey not knowing who would make it to the finish line. I now consider them lifelong friends. To say these last four years, have had a profound impact on the legal and policy landscape would be an understatement. Our nation and our planet have been reshaped in innumerable ways. As I consider my cohort and the research we undertook, I see the major issues of our time. Can we implement policy effectively to pr protect our most vulnerable children? Are universities equitable? How are immigrants faring in the current asylum system? Can we use big data for social good? And how does educational attainment affect police use of force? My research focused on eviction, a topic that dominated headlines for much of the pandemic. In those dark days of lockdown, the necessity of having a home became painfully clear. I am the CEO of a homeless services agency in Central Maine, and keeping Mainers housed took on new meaning for me and my colleagues. Prevention is central to solving this metastasizing problem. The most popular form of eviction prevention is right to counsel. The theory being that if eviction is a leading cause of homelessness, and if 95% of tenants are without a lawyer, and if 95% of tenants subsequently lose their eviction case, we can solve much of the problem by making sure tenants have a lawyer with them in court. It sounds straightforward, but as researchers everywhere are known to say, Reality is far more complicated than it appears at first glance. The biggest proponents of right to counsel are lawyers themselves, and they tend to see the solution in binary terms. Conventional wisdom tells us that people with lawyers are more likely to win and those without will lose. And as a former lawyer, I do am inclined to like the idea of right to counsel. Let's just give lawyers to everyone. But as a nonprofit, Human services professional, in my experience, most people do not want a lawyer. They want their pain and their discomfort to be ameliorated and they want their hardship to go away. At the heart of my research is the study of justice. What is fair, what is equitable, and what invites people to thrive as full members of the community? Before we can answer these questions, we must first understand what doing justice means for the people who need it. My research on eviction focused on the lived experience of defendant tenants in eviction proceedings. I wanted to know what justice looked and felt like to them. Was justice just about a fair process, even if it produced wildly un uh, unequal outcomes for the litigants? Was it a 50-50 equity in rulings? Half the time landlords won, the other half tenants. Or was it something less tangible? 
The result of asking these questions produced the most interesting data because what my study participants said wasn't that justice was having a lawyer. Justice, Tennant said, was the experience of living where they wanted to live in a place that was safe with a strong sense of community and support systems like rental assistance that helped them when they could not help themselves. Home, it turns out, is more than the four walls that keep out the weather. In fact, justice is hard to recognize when we hide it behind layers of assumptions. For justice and eviction to become reality, we have to change the way we think about it. Here is another truth. Change begins with the first new question. This is what makes our accomplishments today so powerful. When I began my educational journey long ago during the Ford administration, like many of you, I asked a lot of questions. And my goal was to acquire knowledge. But a doctoral program is unique in education because we didn't come here just to acquire more knowledge. Rather, over several years of dedicated study, we have learned to produce it. Now we can ask new questions that have no answer, and we can find the answers for ourselves. The ability to produce knowledge as well as to question it is an awesome skill. This is why intellectuals are always the first targets of authoritarians. My friends, we are at an inflection point. Our entire academic and professional careers have brought us to this moment where we have become watchmen and watchwomen unbound by the limitations of conventional wisdom because we are now able to change it. As we navigate a world full of logical fallacies and prevarication, we must stand firm. We must not let fear and intimidation dim the promise of a more perfect union. In the immortal words of the Welsh poet Dylan Thomas, I call on each one of us to, here to rage, rage against the dying of the light. In your own sphere of influence, Use the powerful tools of rigor, validity, and empiricism to shed light on injustice. Whether your work is in education, healthcare, or the vast array of professions in which you will find doctors of law and policy, do not sit back and concede victory to those who seek to peddle alternative facts and who deny our black, brown, indigenous, disabled, immigrant, women, poor, and LGBTQIA friends and relations the right to be free and equal members of this beloved community. Where, <laughs> wherever you go in your work and in your research, know that it is more than procedural fairness. We uncover justice with each new question when we ask and it is revealed by careful analysis of the outcomes our systems produce. Most importantly, remember that justice is not a process. It is an experience. And if justice is not experienced by some of us, it is denied to us all. Be as fearless in your quest for justice as you have been at arriving at this moment in time. Congratulations and thank you. I just want to say I'm, I'm so moved and amazed at the, the soul that, that underlies all the topics I heard today. And I want to congratulate Drs. Walker, Simcoe, and White, and to all of you for the amazing work and accomplish that you have achieved today. Let's give ourselves another round. Thank you. So doctors, on behalf of the entire academic team, your faculty and administrators, we want you to know how happy we are to have arrived at this day with each one of you. You have achieved something extraordinary. Remember that today is not the day that's the end of your education. Your learning journey is not bounded in time any more than it is by space. 
Today is also not the end of your journey with Northeastern. You're graduating into a thriving, expanding global network of Northeastern alumni. The world is ever changing, but you are prepared to meet and conquer its challenges. You've made sacrifices, personal and professional, that speak to your drive, your dedication, and your sense of purpose. Your love of learning has carried you to this day, propelling you to a life of achievement and fulfillment. Be proud. Know that you, what you have accomplished is nothing short of extraordinary. And remember, Northeastern will always be there for you, wherever you are. Please take us with, that, with you on, on your journey. Wherever it takes you, please return to us often. Not only in your thoughts, but, and not only as alumni, but in active roles as mentors, co-op employers, industry advisors, teachers, and coaches of all the many students and future doctors who will follow in your footsteps in the College of Professional Studies. Doctors, we charge you with carrying forward the values of the College of Professional Studies. On behalf of the college, our faculty and our staff, and our distinguished guests, let me congratulate you once more on your accomplishments. Our hearts are filled with joy for you today and pride in all that you will accomplish in the future. Our newest doctors, I salute you. Congratulations. Will all graduates and advisors remain seated and wait for the university marshals to lead you into the recession? We ask that the audience remain seated until the graduates have recessed and then join us for a celebratory reception at the Husky Hospitality Hub at the Cabot Center. Uh -huh. 